Joplin is a neat little markdown note-taking app, and I've been using it pretty extensively for the past week or so, so I thought it'd be a good idea to do a video on it. So if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm trying to hit a thousand subs by some point in the near future, so any help will be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So one thing I do want to get out of the way really early on is that the default key bindings for Joplin are absolutely horrendous. We're not going to go over them just yet. I'll save that for a bit later in the video once I've actually gone over what you can actually do with Joplin. So it's got a desktop version and a terminal version. We're going to go through the terminal version today. I might do a, another video on the desktop version, but this is one that I've been using lately. So I've got it bound to JP just so it's a bit easier to open up. And this is what it looks like by default. I don't know if you can theme it or anything, I haven't actually looked into doing that yet. I've changed some key bindings and that's about it. So, when you first open up Joplin, you basically have nothing here. It might show the help menu on the side and that's about it. So, basically what this lets you do is it lets you make notebooks and then inside of those notebooks lets you put notes. So, the notebooks are basically just groupings of notes and then a note is a file that you write in Markdown. So, I've got three notebooks in here. I've got my programming notebook, my writing notebook, and my YouTube notebook. And then in each of those notebooks, I, I can have different markdown styled notes. So in here, we've got like my upcoming videos, my video ideas, and notes on a video I want to do in a couple of days. So let's say we want to make a new notebook. So how would we go about doing this? So we can just press MB, that is the default binding. So we do that and then we can give it a name. Let's call it like video or something. And then inside of that, if we go into there, we can now make a new note for that notebook. So let's just call it note because I'm boring. And then if we open that up, then we can just start writing in here. So this will bring up whatever your default editor is. So whatever you've got set in your shell. So I've got Vim set, but if you want to use something like Nano, I don't know, Ed, Emacs. Actually, if you're probably using Emacs, you've, you've probably got something set up within Emacs to do this. But... You can use basically any normal editor. I've tried getting GUI programs integrated into systems like this, and they've always been a problem. I would recommend sticking with a terminal application. So use something like Nano if you don't really like Vim, or if you just want to use something good, you just use Vim. Anyway, so if we put stuff in here, then we have these notes, and then we can just go back out in here and cycle through all of our other notes. So if you ever need to bring up the help menu, that is just... It does autofill a little bit, so you can do help, and I think all will bring up the entire help menu, but the one you're going to mainly worry about is help and then key map. This will bring up what the key bindings to the application are. So, as I mentioned earlier, I have basically rebound a lot of the keys. So by default, to actually cycle through each of these windows, you have to use tab and shift tab, which isn't obvious at all by default, because the way you go up and down is with the arrow keys. I've left the arrow key bindings in, but I've also added in arrow key bindings to move left and right, just because that's a bit easier to use occasionally if my hand's on that side of the keyboard. But mainly, I'll be using the Vim keys to move around, so H, J, K, and L, and obviously, if you ever used Vim, then you know what each of those keys are going to be doing in here. So if you've got enough notebooks or enough notes where it goes down to the bottom of the screen, it will start doing paging. So you also have the option of doing page ups and page downs. If you do that when there isn't any more than one page, then it will just go to the top and the bottom, which is fairly standard fare, I guess. So to start editing a notebook, that's just bound to enter by default. And I've also got it bound to I, so that's just because that's insert mode within Vim, so it just makes sense to actually use that. And then deletes I've got as the delete key, X and D, because those are all sort of deletion keys within Vim. X obviously is the deletion key, but within Vim you can also do DD to delete something. So if we want to say delete that notebook that we just made, for example, we can do D and then that would delete all of the notes and all of the sub notebooks. I guess you can, can you put notebooks within a notebook? Wait, make notebook. Okay, no you can't. That's just a weirdly way that's phrased, I guess. Delete all notes and sub notebooks within this notebook. Maybe there's a way to make notebooks within a notebook. I don't know, but regardless, we can delete this one that we just made before and there we go, now it's gone. 
So to close this console, I've just got it set to C. I don't remember what it's bound to by default. It doesn't really matter. It's a terrible binding. If we press that again, then it brings up the full terminal. You can also show the metadata for a file. So if we bring that up for a notebook, does that do anything? Press the wrong key. I guess it just shows the ID and a couple other things. I'm not sure the latitude and longitude. Is that showing where I am? I don't actually know what that is showing. That's a, I don't know, that's odd. Anyway, I've never used that. It's not too important. So you can also copy a notebook, move a notebook. Exit isn't actually bound to anything when you first create this program, which is weird. So you actually have to write in exit. So if we do that now, we just write it as a command. So that's with the colon here and then just exit. And then that will quit out of it. It doesn't, usually it'll clear this off, but I guess it didn't do it that time. I'm not sure why. Odd. Okay, anyway. Sometimes it acts weirdly because terminals are weird sometimes. I think that might just be a ST problem, not a Joplin problem. Anyway, it also doesn't have the ability to clear any to-dos. So you can actually turn any of these notes into a to-do. It shows up here that you can actually make a to-do from scratch, but you can actually just turn any note into a to-do as well. So if you want to say change an upcoming videos into a to-do, we can just press space and then it adds this little bracket here. And then you can just say, oh, that's finished now. Or if we want to turn that back into just a regular note, then we can press T and that, that'll clear that off. That one isn't bound by default either. So yeah, this is pretty much what Joplin is. So I don't know what you're gonna use it for. I typically use it for just keeping track of video ideas and random other ideas I have because I am a very forgetful person. So if I don't write something down within a couple of minutes of thinking of it, I'm probably gonna forget about it. I'm not like, the kind of person who likes to like meticulously plan out my day. That sort of stuff I'll keep in my head, but for just general like video ideas or programming ideas, I wanna write these down as soon as I can so that I don't end up forgetting about them. So if you want to rebind the keys within Joplin, that's actually fairly simple. So if we quit out of this, I don't, okay, I guess I don't have that thing bound properly. It still quits out of the app, but it crashes it. So I'll fix the exit binding, but if you do want to just take it as it is, it'll be down on my GitHub. That'll be down below as always. So yeah, if we want to change the bindings for Joplin, we can go into my dot config folder and then it is in the Joplin folder down here, wherever it is, I scrolled right past it. So there's actually three Joplin folders. There's the Joplin with a capital. I think that might be the database or something. I'm not exactly sure. Then you've got the Joplin folder and the Joplin desktop folder. So the one we're looking at is the Joplin folder and we wanna go into keymap.json. So by default, this file won't actually be here, but on the Joplin website, there's actually a full list of the default key bindings. So you can copy that in and then just dump it in here. I don't think you need to include the default. If you don't override anything, it might just keep whatever the default key bindings are. I'm not sure. I would recommend just taking everything just so if you want to rebind anything later on, it'll be easier. So we bring that up and yeah, this is just basically the style of file it's in. It's not too complicated. I guess exit's not actually a command that I can use. I thought it was. Oh, I type function. No, okay, I guess it's just not a command that's available. I'll fix that at some point. It's not too important right now. So yeah, let's say we wanted to rebind something like focus next, and that is to go into the next window. That's pretty easy. We just change the keys that are available in this array. So if we want to add it to like, I don't know, Y for whatever reason. Actually, no, I've already got that bound to something. We'll put that on, what's something I'm not using? P, yeah. Okay, now we'll bring up another terminal, bring up Joplin again. And if we bring up help key map, then that'll just show that as a key that's available to use. So yeah, it's pretty easy to configure this application. It's most of the stuff you're gonna to wanna to configure will be in here. There might be, as I said, I don't know if you can do theming in this. I haven't actually looked. If there is, I might do a separate video on that if this one does fairly well. So let me know down below if you wanna see that. So yeah, I don't think there's much else to go over for this application because it's just a very basic application. Really, you can do everything that Joplin does just with a terminal file manager and some folders. But it's nice to have all of this stuff grouped together like this. So. Yeah, it's 
I don't know, it's just a very simple structure that makes taking notes just much easier. So, if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below, let me know what you think. If you want to see me go over the desktop version or maybe how I can figure some other stuff with Joplin, let me know down below and I'll happily do that. So, if you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. Down below, I've got all of my links like my Discord and my library, so go check those out. And if you want to see other videos like this, go check out the playlist this video's in and you'll probably find something interesting in there. And I think that's pretty much everything for me, so I'm out.